My name is Miss Christie and welcome to Hagrid's Garden. As you can see, the centerpiece of my garden is a garden shed which we like to call Hagrid's Head. Today we're going to explore the world of gardening through composting. Composting? That doesn't sound like much fun. Why would we want to learn about composting? Well, it's a beautiful spring day in Bothell. Unfortunately, we can't leave our houses, so we might as well see what we can do to learn about science in the garden. It's something that all of us can do. It's easy and you have everything you need right at home. Why is it important to compost? Did you know that more than 40% of what ends up in our landfill is actually food waste? Well, what causes food waste? Well, it's the stuff that you and I throw away after we finish our dinner, the stuff that doesn't get used at restaurants, and even sometimes crops that don't get harvested from fields. You know what else? It's sometimes just stuff that looks ugly that no one wants to eat. So instead, they throw it in the garbage and they move on. Well, what we don't understand is that oftentimes this is creating an increase in the amount of methane that's in the environment. And methane is an extremely harmful gas. The easiest way that you and I can compost is by using our yard waste bin. Most of us have one of these in our house that's provided by our waste management company. And out on the top, you'll see that it provides an example of exactly what things you can safely put in your yard waste bin. As you can see, mine right now is mostly filled with garden waste. What happens is the company will come tomorrow morning, they're gonna pick this up and they're going to create compost with it. I had very little work to do except to make sure that the things that I put in this bin were what they allow. They will then take it and instead of going into a landfill, it will then be used to uh, create healthy compost, which we can bring back in our garden. There are a lot of really easy and cheap ways to make your own compost bin. You can see some examples right here on this slide. What you need to understand is you simply need a way to collect the stuff that you put in your compost, which can include leaves, grass, food waste, and other things. It is really important to know what to put in the bin and what to leave out of the bin. But this doesn't have to be an expensive process. You also need to remember that if you have a compost pile that's open, sometimes you're gonna get some visitors to it that maybe you don't want, things like rats and raccoons. So that's why my compost pile looks like this. It's one of these bins that you can get that's easy to rotate and has a nice lid. So I don't have to worry about visitors coming and munching on all my food. Now, depending on how much work you want to put into your compost bin, you can have something called a hot compost bin or a cold compost bin. And really, it just depends on how specific you want to be at exactly what you're putting in your bin. What you want is you want to create the right environment between the carbon, the nitrogen, and the water. And if you do it right, it will compost very quickly and you'll get to move it out in your garden and start the process all over again. However, if you're not as careful as to what percentage of each thing you put in, you end up with a cold composting bin, which is what this is. For a hot compost bin, you need to be very careful about putting the right amount of brown material in, which is stuff like newspaper, dried grass, and dried leaves, along with your food waste and other soil. You wanna make sure it stays nice and moist. And if you do this right, you can create compost in as little as 18 days because what's happening is that the bin is getting up between 140 to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. That is really hot. So if I came out here in the middle of the summer and I had the right mix, I could create compost really fast, get it out to my garden, and then start over with a new process. This right now is just a cold compost bin. The only thing that I put in it right now is I had a cover crop out in my garden that I removed. And it has actually a very high nutrient uh, addition that I added to my soil over the winter. And it's in here right now and it's not doing anything. 
It is very cold to the touch. It's not really disintegrating. I haven't started putting any food waste at this point because I just turned the bin over uh, and started with it empty only two weeks ago. So right now it isn't going to process very quickly. If I started by putting more brown material in and adding water to it and turning it on a regular basis, it would actually start the process of heating up. You also wanna make sure it stays in the sun somewhere where it can get some natural heat. The thing you want to remember if you're doing your own compost is that there are some things you do not want to put in this kind of a compost bin. This includes any type of meat, fish, believe it or not, citrus and onions are also not good for this kind of bin. You never want to put any coal ash or any scraps of wood that have been treated. So if you have sawdust from treated wood, you do not want to put that in this kind of bin. You also want to make sure you don't put any glossy paper or labels from fruit. And most importantly, you also don't want to put any chemicals of any kind. Remember, this is going back out into your garden. So you want to make sure it's full of only organic material. This is my friend Thorin. He's homeschooling with me since we're quarantined and we can't go to school. And he's going to help me with the science experiment. For this experiment, we only have stuff that I collected from my house since we aren't currently going out to the grocery store. What you're going to need to make your own small compost bin is the following some sort of a clear bottle. As you can see, I cut off the top few inches and I left the lid on. Any size bottle will do. Your experiment will just depend on what you have on hand. We don't use a lot of plastic, so mine is a really small water bottle. You also need some water, some dried leaves from the garden, dried grass, anything like that, some cut up paper, and in this case, I'm using newspaper, and this right here is my food scraps. What I don't use from this is gonna end up going into my compost pile so I can start trying to create a hot pile. Finally, it's helpful to have scissors, tape, and a journal. This is a science experiment, so we're gonna keep track of this and see what happens over time. So the first thing that we wanna do in order to create our compost pile is to start our journal. Basically, you just need a blank piece of paper and every week we're going to check in with our compost pile to see how it's going. All right, Thorin, here is what we're going to do. We're going to start with a very small level of just regular dirt. You can get a little scoop of dirt out of that pile right there. All right, excellent. We want to make it nice and flat. So now Thorne is going to place a little bit of our food waste in. Because we have a small bottle, we want to make sure that we use small food waste. In this case, we have some carrots. It looks like we have a little bit of asparagus. We're not going to use eggshells. I put those in my hot compost, but it takes a long time for those to break down. We also have some coffee grounds. All right, that's great. After we have our food, we're going to put a little bit more soil in. The rest of this is going to go in my hot compost. Now what we need is our brown material. Again, our brown material is usually made up of things like shredded paper. So here I just have some shredded newspaper. I'm going to go ahead and put that on top. Stuff it down in there. Okay, we're going to have a little bit more soil on top of our paper. Soil. a little bit of leaves. This is just leaf leaves that I collected off the back of our deck. So they're mostly dry old leaves from last fall that we never managed to collect. And then finally our very last layer is one last layer of soil. Now, with everything that I have left here, I'm just going to put that in my compost bin so to make sure that it doesn't go to waste. The last thing you want to add before you close the bottle is a little bit of water. What you're going here for here is the kind of the texture of a wrung out sponge. You don't want it sopping wet, you just want it moist. So pour it very slowly and see if you can kind of get all the layers to be moist. That's good. Let's get that, let that run down. Okay. Then we're gonna put the top on the bottle and tape it back together, just like it's a full bottle. You want 
it sealed as much as you can. Now what we've done here is we've actually gone ahead and marked all of our levels and we're gonna tape it on here because this is gonna be an experiment. We're gonna check it every week and see what's happening with our le levels. We're gonna come back and label it next week and see how it's changed. Now, what's great about doing this kind of experiment is it's great right now to sit and think, Thorne, what do you think is gonna happen by the time we look at this next week? It'll, some of these things will start the process of dissolving. That's excellent. We know it's gonna start the process of dissolving, but the question is how quickly will it do that? It might be different for each of us because where we place it, how much sun it's getting, and exactly how big our bottle was when we started are gonna really have a large effect on exactly what we managed to accomplish with our experiment. So this is something that you can easily do at home. We're gonna check back with you next week and see how it's going. Now remember to keep track of your journal. We're gonna keep checking in on it. Next week, we're gonna talk about vermicomposting. What in the world is vermicomposting? Well, vermicomposting is the same process but using worms. So you're gonna meet my friend Steve, Steve the worm. We're gonna figure out how to compost with him next week.